Imagine an online banking portal, My Secure Bank, where users can log in, view their balance, transfer funds, and manage their account. No, the users are required to log in to access the dashboard. After login, users are redirected to their personal account dashboard with the slash dashboard as path in the URL. There is another functionality forget password in the login page. And when the users click on the forget password link, users can reset their password. So when they click this link, they are redirected to the password reset page with slash reset dash password path. Now there is the vulnerability here. The application does not properly validate the redirect URL. And it looks like this. HTTPS colon slash slash mysecurebank.com slash forget password question mark redirect equals the value that is mysecurebank.com slash reset password. But if the attacker knows about the vulnerability, they can change the redirect parameter to any URL of their choice and redirect the user to the attacker's host. An attacker could trick a user into clicking the forget password link, but instead of being redirected to the legitimate password reset page, the user is sent to a malicious website such as http colon slash slash malicious site.com. Now the malicious site will be designed to look like the legitimate MySecureBank password reset page. And when the users enters their login credentials on the fake page, the attacker can harvest those credentials and use them for malicious purposes, which could lead to whole account takeover. This is Open Redirect Vulnerability. An Open Redirect Vulnerability occurs when a web application or server redirects a user to another URL without properly validating the destination. If you want to have a look at one of the simplest examples of this vulnerability, have a look at this report. As you can see, the vulnerable parameter here is URL and it accepts any random host. In this case, http colon slash slash bing.com and if you look at the screenshot, the attacker has injected that particular bing.com URL in the URL parameter and in the response it says 302 found and in the location you can see it's being reflected that the user is being redirected to that particular host. Have a look at this another report where the user reported an open redirect vulnerability in inventory.observe.com but in this case there is no parameter here except there is a URL directly after the forward slash in the end of the main host, which is observe.com. So an attacker can inject their URL right after the end of the observe.com, like http colon slash slash google.com. In this case, he's using a URL stanko.sh, and through this user could be redirected to a malicious domain. Now, sometimes it's not going to be that straightforward and you need to bypass it. In some cases, the server will check if there is main domain or not. For example, if the domain is upserve.com, then the server is checking if there is upserve word present in the redirect URL or not. In that case, you can bypass it by putting a subdomain of yours. For example, malicious.upserve.com that you own. So it will going to bypass that validation over there because it's only checking observe.com, not malicious.observe.com. Sometimes you can also bypass it. For example, if the domain is, let's say, whitelist.com and you want to inject your malicious URL, you can put something like whitelist.com.evil.com. Now the server is going to redirect you to evil.com. So this is a filter bypass. If you want to have a look at more bypasses, you can have a look at this cheat sheet. I'm going to give the link in the description where you can check out multiple open redirect filters as well as XSS bypass. Okay, now how you can increase the impact of open redirect vulnerability by exploiting XSS. We can understand this with a real life example. So I was looking for references and I came across this blog and I find it pretty interesting. There is an open redirect on the login page with go to parameter leading to account takeover. So the vulnerable parameter in this case is go to that holds a URL. So let's see what's actually happening here. It says there is a hidden parameter called go to on slash login.php that redirects to another location after login. 
There is an open redirect vulnerability that allows an attacker to craft a URL to send to the victim. So after the login on the genuine first blood site, this is the vulnerable domain in this case, they are redirected to the attacker's website and the auth cookies are also passed to the attacker's site. Okay, so let's see the steps. This is the crafted URL by the attacker. So it is http colon slash slash firstbloodhackers.com slash login.php and the parameter go to. And now it has a JavaScript payload. Let's decode what it is actually doing. JavaScript colon document.location that contains the burp collaborator URL and document.cookie. From a first look, it is easy to understand that it is redirecting the user to the burp collaborator URL and it is also fetching the cookie of the users after the login. But if you copy this whole thing and if you decode it in some URL decoder, you can find it online. You can see that this percent %09 here is actually a tab. So the decker might have used it to bypass some filters because the server is not accepting JavaScript directly. So that's why this is a filter bypass. So J tab and script and then document.location. And then there is a URL encode of code that is person 27. And then the burp collaborator URL. And then comes the code person 27 again. And then plus document.cookie. The plus is percent to b which is also the URL encoded form. And that makes up the whole payload. So what if the attacker send this particular URL to a user? The user will be in the login page. The user is going to put their, let's say, username and password. And once they log in, they will be redirected to burp collaborator URL and their cookies will be sent as well. As you can see in this screenshot, the leaked cookies. I hope this makes sense to you. But to be able to bypass these filters could be different in different cases, so you have to try and error to see how the server is responding. This is a quick vulnerability that you can look for when you are hunting. A really good book for beginners. And I'm going to provide this blog link in the description as well, plus every other report that I mentioned in this video as well. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know what vulnerability you want me to talk about next in the comments section and I'll see you next time.